All right. Late last night, early this morning, Nintendo held their corporate management policy briefing. you got to remember, Japan's 14 hours ahead, so it was like the middle of the day for them. Uh, and they did this digitally to investors, uh, and we have their slideshow. Uh, there, there's nothing that special in their slideshow, uh, but... Uh, during the presentation, obviously, they didn't just look at the slideshow and just show people slides. If that was the case, they wouldn't even need to have the briefing. Uh, Shintura Furukawa was on camera talking to investors about a lot of things at Nintendo. And the coolest thing, in my opinion, that he talked about, the coolest thing uh, is about, well, the future of the company and the future of Switch. Because Sh uh, Shintura Furukawa actually dabbled on what their plans are for the future of switch and this is interesting because some of the words he said are things that we haven't heard from nintendo in 20 years i'm not even kidding by the way before we get into all this i got to tell you about our two giveaways we were giving away three copies of super mario 3d all-stars to enter that go to the green dot i'll link down in the description uh, also we are giving away a switch light with two second place winners winning a switch game of choice to, to win that uh, go down in the description there's a laundry list of ways to enter including subscribing to the channel so check that out so i'm getting this from david gibson who attended uh, he often does uh, little quick tweeting translations of, of things that are said during the meeting all right so david gibson said R&D investment, previously used to look at conventional tech that enabled a lower price and appealed to users. But now, cutting edge technology. Look at how intuitive it is for users. Also, battery life is important given gameplay of five to six hours. What is the most comfortable for the users is what we are working on. So, so, David Gibson even admits, someone mentioned him DLSS and David Gibson's like, yeah, I thought the odds of DLSS and the Switch Pro just went up. So what is Nintendo admitting here? Nintendo hasn't looked at cutting-edge technology in a long time. Let, let's start with that. They have not looked at cutting-edge technology in a long time. Uh, Nintendo has traditionally focused on the gameplay experience, technology second, and then uh, building everything around uh, whatever tech that they think they need. And it's often not cutting-edge. When you look at PlayStation 5, you look at Xbox Series X. That's cutting-edge technology. Nintendo doesn't do that. They haven't done that since the GameCube days, uh, basically since before uh, Satoru Iwata was CEO. Um, so before Satoru Iwata, Nintendo used to talk about cutting edge technology all the time. After Satoru Iwata, they didn't. Now we have Shintaro Furukawa saying, look, we're looking at cutting edge technology. We're going to see how intuitive it is for users and the battery life's important because they want gameplay around five to six hours. So what Nintendo's admitting is them likely with nvidia we, we can't presume that it is nvidia but you know we know they have a 10-year partnership with them so likely with nvidia they're likely looking at cutting edge tech for a new switch we're, we're talking volta tech we're talking they just acquired arm so the latest arm processors and the thing is that technology despite being so much more powerful is also a lot more power efficient than the tagger x1 so if they're able to take next gen or, well, I guess it's almost current gen at this point, um, technology, and shrink it and, and make a new chipset that works. Nintendo's looking at it. They want it. They, they want the five to six hours of gameplay, but they also want cutting-edge tech. They want to beef up their Switch. They want DLSS 2.0 taking their games to 4K on modern TVs because 4K TVs are now affordable. Nintendo didn't dive into the, four, the, you know, the HD pool back with the Wii because HD TVs were still expensive at the time, back in 2005, 2006, right? But they quickly became affordable. Well, 4K TVs are already affordable. Anyone who replaces a TV in their home likely is buying a 4K TV because you can get them for like $300. They're, they're dirt cheap. It doesn't mean they're the greatest. and doesn't mean you should use them. But, I mean, they, they are dirt cheap, right? So what Nintendo's doing is they are deciding that latest and greatest tech is important. They, they do stress throughout the thing, you know, that they're, they're all about innovation and, and, and giving people what they don't expect. And yes, an upgraded next-gen Switch with, with better technology is kind of expected. But they also mentioned that one thing that's happening is the Switch is different from everybody else because you could take it with you. It sounds like Nintendo is going to be doing a Switch thing for a while, a decade plus. It, it, it sounds like that, that's the plan, a, a decade plus of Switch. And because of that... I think they are looking at the latest and greatest technology from NVIDIA. I think they're working hand-in-hand -hand with NVIDIA for a new chip, a new chipset, 
and a new Switch that they can release at a semi-affordable price. I don't think we're going to see anything much about 350. I think the three, the 299, um, 349 is kind of the ceiling Nintendo sees for releasing a system. So they're not going to release another one until the technology is affordable enough to the point that end consumers can get it for a reasonable price. But R&D investment previously used to look at only conventional tech that enabled lower price and appeal to users. But now they're looking at cutting edge. Like... Literally, they used to look at just budget, budget, budget. Now they're looking at cutting edge technology. Guys, I'm starting to feel that these rumors around a 4K switch, I'm starting to feel that uh, these, uh, you know, reports out there that heck, maybe even next year, like I'm starting to, to believe this is the first time Nintendo has publicly stated anything about next gen. And the first time they talked about cutting edge technology and obviously, you know, trying to balance cutting edge technology with battery life. This is one of the first times Nintendo has ever done this. And they never do this. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. In the midst of the highest selling year for Switch ever, Nintendo doesn't do this. They, they, they don't They don't invade on, on the current platform's parade and talk about next gen. But Shintura Furukawa, eight, eight mints in words here. He went straight to the investors and said, guys, our R&D, all that money that we've increased in R&D over the last year or two, we're not looking at, at, at how to shrink a Tegra X1 some more and get some more battery life out of it. We, we ain't looking at ways to take the Mariko processor and make it better. Hell no. We're looking at how to do it with cutting edge tech. We're looking at what's next. Cutting edge technology that can still give us battery life of five to six hours. One, this does defeat all the theories out there that Nintendo's working on a, a, a system that goes under your TV. Clearly, with it having battery life, it's not a system that goes under your TV. We're looking at another Switch form factor. But hell, man. DLSS 2.0. If DLSS 2.0 is coming, it, guys, that, mean, that means we're getting Tensor Cores. That means we're getting Volta. Volta is NVIDIA's latest GPU tech. That means we're getting Volta. And that is so exciting. That is... Technology has gotten to the point where Nintendo doesn't need to compete on teraflops. They don't have to have four, five, six teraflops. They don't. Teraflops are not the be-all, end-all, guys. You can get what looks like native 4K resolution with DLSS 2.0. It's, it's been proven. We've seen it in games like Control. You can run that game at 720p, DLSS 2.0 it, all the way up to 4K, and it looks the same as native 4K. It's almost indiscernible. You have to be really, really fine attention to like little minor details to realize it's not actually 4K. And you get better frame rates. You take those ray tracing cores, throw ray tracing away, and have it focus on resolution and, and uh, resolution bumping and frame rates. Ray tracing is great, by the way. I, I love ray tracing. The fact that the, the Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5 have ray tracing is great. I'm excited about ray tracing. It is a really cool thing uh, that happens with light uh, that, that just makes it so much more realistic. But you know what? I'm okay without it. I don't need ray tracing in my games. Give me that DLSS 2.0, man. Give me that 4K switch. Give me that switch that you could tell outputs at 4K and users won't even know the difference. They're going to be like, oh man, I could spend $499 and buy an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5, those 4K systems, or I could spend 300 to 350 buy a Nintendo Switch that gives me visuals that look the same. At least it does in the naked eye because they're using next-gen Volta tech. That's what we're talking about here. Nintendo doesn't do this. I don't know what, what's going on. Shintura Furukawa, man. You know, there's been some criticism of Shintura Furukawa since he took over because he's more of a businessman. Well, let me tell you, that businessman is laying it out there that, dude, they're working on cutting-edge technology, and we're going to get a super powerful switch. It's going to be a huge leap. It's going to appear to be a huge leap because of DLSS 2.0. I don't know if it's coming next year. I know the rumors were next year. I don't know if that's happening. But Nintendo, dude, they're, they're, they're going all out. They know they got something hot. They ain't letting it go. They, they're not going to Wii U this. They're going to go all out, and this is insane. I haven't seen a Nintendo this confident, this uh, a Nintendo this aggressive in a long time. But Nintendo knows what they got on their hands, man. They, they, they see Super Mario 3D All-Star selling. They see Animal Crossing sales. They see the Switch exploding during a pandemic. Nintendo knows what they have on their hands. So we'll see what happens. All right, folks. I am Nintendo Robo Dance from Nintendo Prime. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next video.